Hello, viewers. My name is Adam. Yeah, I'm here. This is Seeking Me Productions. Bring you another movie review. It's that time of the year when you really do need to just go around and just see some really good films. Um, the holiday season is usually that time where a lot of war seasons comes out to play. Mm -hmm. And or like the more family oriented um, big movies are also populating the multiplexes. Well, we decided to go ahead and watch a really decent family film ourselves, and the one we chose was Wonka. Now, on this channel, we have, like, basically a severe lack of <laughs> media that's related to classic children-based media. It's true. I mean, we only started out not too long ago, but that doesn't mean that we haven't seen a, quite our fair share of family fare. Especially those that are based off of classic literature from very famous authors like um, Hans Christopher Andersen mm -hmm. or Dr. Seuss or in this particular case, Ronald Dahl. And when it comes to Ronald Dahl, I find myself very engaged with his work. Uh, I absolutely love Matilda. Uh, of course, I love the uh, the, it was like the BFG. Um, but it James is... James and Giant Peach as well. Yeah, oh, James and Giant Peach. Was that him? Oh, well, there you go. But I feel as though it is with Willy Wonka and his amazing chocolate factory, though I feel is his crowning achievement. I absolutely fell in love with that story. The first time I actually got to read it. But of course, my first introduction with it was when I actually got to see his cinematic presentation. Yes, the 1970 film that starred the iconic but still beloved um, Gene Wilder, rest his peace. Yes. <laughs> and he, he made a very um, timeless uh, he started a very timeless classic, mm -hmm. and um, it's been it looks some pretty big shoes to fill. Not to say that somebody hasn't already tried. I mean, not too long ago we had Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, um, with Willy Wonka being um, pre um, represented played by. By, or played by uh, Johnny Depp. That had its, its own unique flair. And yeah, because Tim Burton is usually just such a hit and miss um, director. It definitely divides individuals on whether or not you can actually call it a decent re uh, adaptation. Uh, but this is a new one. So, Wonka. It is an origin story that is technically an original take on Willy Wonka, just based off of elements that were addressed in the original story. In this particular um, adaptation, uh, the t uh, the character of Wonka is actually being played by Timothy Chalamet. And wow, when you actually get to experience the story from um, Timothy's uh, point of view and the way he basically engages with the material, I found myself quite enchanted with the entire um, piece. Yeah, so the director of this movie is Paul King, who mm -hmm. is known for his Paddington movies. A movie, a set of movies that we that have not watched. No. We probably won't ever. <laughs> it's, not, it's not our... We, uh, look, we like our uh, family fair, but not everything is for us. And that's yeah. fine. And what he did was actually made something that is very, like, is like one of the most well-balanced family films in terms of how it was able to have such a wholehearted sincerity mm -hmm. with humor but still with a very dark undercurrent that is is actually very much present in even Ronald Dahl's other um, literature work. Yes, that's very true. I mean, look at the witches. For, you no know, <laughs> further introduction for that. But uh, specifically with um, with Wonka, uh, the story itself follows uh, the titular character, in this case, um, on his journey to actually funding and uh, and actually running his his own chocolate basically factory, basically trying to get, get to, like basically getting up the business as he's an aspiring chocolatier himself. Yes, and you actually find out that a lot of this motivation to becoming a chocolatier comes from his unique um, ties to his um, deceased mother, who in herself was a chocolate maker of sorts. Yeah. And uh, the original take on this um, that is at least more highlighted um, take that they want to take with Wonka is essentially 
going ahead very much into the more of the fantastical route. Oh, the yeah. Character. I think this one kind of focuses on that on a heavy sto scope to, so, to such an extent that it, I find myself chuckling and actually putting in the back of my mind uh, a uh, ties towards other fantasy fairs. Not necessarily that this movie actually makes those claims. This not that. This is very much a story geared within the world of Robert, that Robert Dahl has created, and of course, specifically within the Wonka universe itself. But you just if you see the movie, you'll. It'll be interesting to see where y'all come from as far as the story details itself. And as far as, like, it's not necessarily a lot of surprises. It's actually there's still very, like, as well structured and well executed the story unfolds. Yeah, it true. is fairly, still pretty predictable. Yeah. As far as, like, some of the twists that might well occur. But it's because of this, the, how well it's crafted, it's, like, it, like, it, like the, the mere fact that it's not as predictable, like, it's very predictable as it comes around, it still sweeps you off your feet. And oh yeah. Well and thoroughly entertained. And most of that is the heavy lifting being done by the actors in this film. Like Timothy Chalamet yet again. This is exact this is his story. This is uh, uh Chalamet's um stage and he is eating it all up. At first immediately when I, we did an early trailer bait, um the trailers came off as though that he was came off as very over the top mm -hmm. to the point that it's like he, you could tell that he's just playing a character, and it takes you out of the experience when you watch those previews. But when you actually see him actually act the character, uh, act as the character of Wonka in the story, you really much feel as though this is his unique take on that character. This is not just him th uh, phoning it in and just pl uh, and bringing in some overacting. No, the character that Shalame has created with Wonka. Is a unique experience that is very much ties its to, uh, itself towards the original story, and a hallmarks of what Gene Wilder had uh, brought to his adaptation in the um, in the uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate, uh, Chocolate Factory. But um, it should be um, noted that despite the fact that this film does have some visual. Connect, uh, visual hallmarks from the Gene Wilder film. And this is very much music. his own story, and yeah. this is his own adaptation. Uh, this is not uh, a this is not continuing. Yeah, yeah, it's not a prequel to that. This is not uh, Chalamet's character eventually becoming Gene Wilder's character. This is uh, Chalamet's uh, Wonka growing and developing into his own chocolatier. And one of the very people that helps ground that perspective in Willy Wonka's life is the character of of Noodle, played mm -hmm. by Kayla Lane. She is, plays a character who is a, a young girl who's too bad had to dr grow up very fast. Yes, in a world that unfortunately, as she places us off, um, is ran by uh, liars and cheats and thieves and, and basically steals everything. Is all, is all for the greedy and nothing is left for anybody else. But a role in which could have really have been a throwaway character or a just uh, obligatory uh, child actor in a uh, family film, this is by no means one of those situations. I absolutely adored her and actually found her very enduring in and herself. Yes, and it's unfortunate that a lot of her heartache comes with from the character of play cartoonishly ruthless, ruthless but playfully done by Olivia Coleman's Mrs. Scruddle, mm -hmm. who is like the house, the owner of a um, boarding house in which Willy Wonka has to like resize himself in as he goes along. And yep. it's occupied by other occupants that like they, they play by actors who are character actors who are just like, they do their jobs suitably well. Yeah, but, but at the end of the day, again, this is really much Wonka's story and their players in it. Um, also done very cartoonishly, but yet still fits in foot to the wacky tone of the film are the antagonists of this, uh, other antagonists mm -hmm. in the story. Yes, the fabled uh, Chocolate Cartel, which is a hallmark to the uh, competitors that Wonka ends up finding himself uh, competing against. And one of the main ringleaders in this cartel comes from Slugworth. Yeah, Slugworth is a character who, in the original story, like... 
he's only mentioned in passing and mm-hmm. stuff. And like he's also like had a few cameos and earlier in the story as well. Walk away, he's actually um, knee deep in to the heyday of his career. Exactly. But this is a story where we've actually seen um, this character fleshed out. And you really do have a sense that, yeah, this is, he really much is just the worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another character that um, had populated this very whimsical and charming film is the police captain played by Keegan Michael Key. Now, when it comes to Keegan's work, I'm not usually always a big fan of it. I mean, I think he has, definitely has his fan bases out there, especially when he was doing it with Jordan. Um, but when that, I, I found like his uh, unique approach in this film was uh, actually used appropriately. I feel as though this is probably the best uh, um, that I've seen of him as far as um, what I've actually you know, experienced. In but, fact, this film, he, like because of the... Physical transformation that goes throughout the yeah. film for him is very um, like reminds me of Eddie Murphy's oh yeah um, like take on a fa- on his many many family oriented films. Mm-hmm. But this whole film is put together by the well crafted production um, that Paul King directs. Yeah, um, just like uh, again, you're going to be making you know. Many, uh, many uh, comparisons. Compa- comparisons to the original variation, and then uh, of course the other one that was done uh, 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 that came Tim out, Burton. yeah, Tim Burton's version. Um, this one, you really do feel that magic again that you were missing from the Tim Burton version, but was always the thing that brought you back to Gene Wilder's version. And uh, it helps that even when even though we didn't watch the Paddington movies, um, that level of comfort level, yes. but still heightened sense of whimsical production I, is you the, really do feel as though you want to enjoy this world and be in it yourself yeah 2023 was a year of some of the best production designs um in film yes i mean i thought i cannot tell you that when you first get to experience uh wonka's uh at least his first store and then uh, i really need to be there yes uh, like <laughs> in each of the uh, in any adaptation from the previous two and even especially on this one that you know a Willy Wonka adaptation did this job well when you yourself want to take part and partake in the, the very delicacy oh my god when hearing somebody crunch into some chocolate I'm not, I'm not going to say right here I'm not the biggest chocolate fan I, I do I ex- am, yeah you are but I'm not I don't really I do like candy here and there but actually over the years I started to just like wane a, a little bit from it but actually having to see it in this film and hearing people crunch into chocolate the way you, that you really know a good chocolate or piece of candy really is, I was hungry. I was I was fiending for some sweets after this. And if you didn't take notice on some of the marketing cues that's later on um, when they started really wrecking it and like showing off when the movie was coming out, mm. this is actually a musical. Oh yeah. Oh my God. The song numbers in this? <sighs> now... Because we said this takes inspiration, very much uh, heavy inspiration from the Gene Wilder mm-hmm. um, starring film, some of the music is from that movie is recalled and reprised in this movie. Of course, everybody was looking forward to their variation of uh, Pure Imagination, but I feel as though some of the newer ones that you're actually introduced into was just as, if not more, sweeter. Yeah, um, this like the original music that's uh, it really do help. Um, I do give this film its own identity. Yes. Um, and the music you should be thankful for for Joby Talbot and Neil Nannan. Listen, if no, you once no, you actually, Neil Hannon. yeah Neil, uh, once you actually get to experience some of these pieces, uh, i.e., one of my favorites ones that come out of his, uh, a world of our own. My, was that just a, a, a delightful The whole delight. visual sequence there was, was, it was, was amazing. The stand, and I like it, stand out yeah. for the whole movie. Mm-hmm. I absolutely loved it. I fell in love. I feel as though that was definitely the point where I was like, oh my God. I mean, I was actually, felt, I was loving this film from, when, from, uh, start, from, to from start to finish. Yes. It's, it's just that, well. And I, my, I, look, I knew that Chalamet had a theater background and song and dance, um, in, you know, in his um, earlier days. But this is the first time I really got to experience it, you know, brought to life, at least from my, from my, from my, from my eyes, my point of view. If, like, basically, if Doom did um, it, made him like a household name. This should. Yeah. I, he, he could sing. 
Yeah. <laughs> he can say. <laughs> but yeah, so we're out the back. Uh, from the very positive things that we said, mm -hmm. um, minus the the predictability of the how the plot goes. And True. Maybe it may or not the very like give or take if you are not a fan of the whimsical nature of the story. I am though. I, <laughs> we we are, like the whimsical helps with fantasy. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm going to say that this film is a solidly great entry. Yeah, I would definitely say that. Uh, a few things could probably push it a little bit further, but as far as we're concerned, this was, ju this was just sweet enough as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. Yeah, there you go. My name is Adam. <laughs> and I am Aaron. This has been a Seeking Me production. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and comment below. What is your thought about this film? Uh, Y'all need to watch Blanca. It's, uh, look, there's quite a few movies that's coming out right now that you, that uh, one of us will be kicking out, and hopefully they'll keep it going. But, uh, it's kind this, of weird. Yeah, it's they're very in a weird. weird space. They're super, DC is, uh, DC is, is down to slumps, but there are other films. It seems behind. to me they're yeah, making their own little comebacks and little uh, their own little uh, niches out there. So, uh, also, uh, hit that bell down there at the bottom for notifications if you want to get more content just like this. Especially on our other social media outlets of Twitter, X, Facebook, and Instagram, and also Letterboxd. Yep, yeah, and we'll see y'all later. See you.